Okay, so we're continuing now with the repair to the Rolex Lady Datejust and in part two of the video I did the reassembly of the movement which you can see there. Um, if you remember the case was um, quite badly broken um, as you can see uh, on the corner there. So this video is about you know, how we change the glass um, for a replacement glass. And the first thing that we've got to do is remove the bezel. Um, and the bezel, of course, if it's in more focus, um, is this component here. This is called a fluted bezel, and this one is in white gold. Um, you will see a huge amount of nonsense on the internet, uh, on YouTube about how to do this. People will say, you have to use one of these, right? Um, uh, which uh, for some bezels is the right way to go, perhaps for more ordinary watches. Some people uh, horrifically will say you have to use one of these, okay? And uh, the only thing that is going to happen uh, if you use one of those is you're going to scratch the watch. Um, this is very sharp, this knife. Uh, and you're probably going to take a great chunk out of your finger when you start to get frustrated and then you slip. Um, this is not a bezel removal tool. If I move it out the way, however, the tool that you can see here in the middle of the shot, maybe that would be better, is a bezel removal tool. And that is the tool that uh, a watchmaker will use for removing a bezel like this. Um, it's very easy to see how it operates. You know, we're just going to place the watch and then these four blades there will uh, sneak in between the case and the bezel. And because they're wedge shaped, as we uh, turn it in like that, the, uh, the bezel will be prized off. Now we need to take every precaution not to scratch the case. Uh, this is a Rolex after all, but you should do it with all watches, particularly any watch you've, you know, that's not your own. Um, you need to take great care with anyone else's watch. So um, you lay a piece of plastic over the top like this. And then you know, as we do with a lot of things, place the watch on uh, there like that. Um, I'm going to line all that up now and then rejoin this video when we're popping the bezel off. Okay, so there's a little Rolex case on the bezel removing tool. Try and give it a little bit more light there like so. All we've got to do is turn the knob um, and those wedges will get between the bezel and the case and gracefully lift it away. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, and here is the tool now having done its job and the um, the main case has come away leaving the bezel and the um, uh, glass crystal and the crystal gasket um, uh, as sort of one component here. So this is fairly straightforward release. What we're just going to do is we're just going to by hand push out the glass and the uh, crystal gasket from this bezel. So let me just set up the camera and do that. So with the bezel and the crystal off, then um, all you have to do is press out the uh, glass. Now you normally can do this by hand. If not, uh, you're gonna need a crystal press, but just give it a push and lo and behold, voila, there is the old crystal and there is the bezel uh, out nice and completely um, undamaged because we've used the proper tools for the job. So what we're going to do now is fit the new glass and pop this bezel back on. Okay, so to fit the new glass, uh, quite straightforward. Um, the first thing to do is to put the uh, little rubber glass or plastic I should say glass gasket um, around the outside 
of where it's going to sit on the case and so just pointing that out here with a piece of pegwood so you sit this on first okay and then seat the glass loosely on top and then just push it gently all the way around to fit it now here's the thing that I always do um, you're going to then look at it from this direction okay and make sure I get in quite close and also far away just to make sure that that lines up perfectly with the stem okay now at this stage you can actually still manipulate it okay so you need to spend a little bit of time on that making sure that the date window is absolutely level with the stem and as you can see you know to be careful um, but you're not going to get much better than that okay looks pretty perfect to me so we're going to go ahead with that now and pop the bezel back on so putting the bezel back on is a simple case of just using a glass press the key thing is that you have to make sure that um, the top part of the tool is concave so it is if I just drag this one out here uh, the inside of it is a little bit like the one you can see that I'm pointing at in the background here um, but uh, you then just place that over the bezel and just as I've done here um, you press down on it and it pops on um, which is reasonably simple um, I like to use a, a press like this rather than one that rotates um, uh, you know it's a very simple machine this but it uh, you know the end of it doesn't rotate uh, what you don't want to happen is put any rotation into the bezel the fluted bezel uh, which then grips the gasket which in turn grips the uh, crystal and starts to rotate that cyclops away from where you've carefully placed it so just use a simple tool like this and you know it'll pop on uh, so long as you're you know reasonably careful um, uh, and, and that's how you pop that back on so that is pretty much done now so let's just take a look at it now it's back on and there is the new crystal back on um, it's pushed down firmly all the way around um, let's just see if I can come in there you can see that the bezel is nicely on there gonna have to you know give the glass a little bit of a clean but the profile should be good on this you should see a profile that looks good all the way around so we got the equal amount of height on the crystal all the way around there so that is good um, and so with quite a lot of noise going on in the background um, I'm now just going to pop the movement in uh, and uh, we are pretty close Okay, so now we've got the glass back on. It's time to sort out the regulation of this watch before we can call it a finished job. So just sorting out the light there on the balance itself. Now, the first thing that we have to do when we do the regulation is to put the watch in beat. Now, before I even talk about that, I do want to give a warning here and that is that guys um, how do I say this don't try this at home um, I'm gonna repeat myself here um, do not try this at home um, on the strength of watching this video this video is for really interest only and you know maybe of use to other watchmakers but if you're not a watchmaker and you're not used to dealing with things at this size and this fragility, then I strongly recommend that you uh, do not do what I'm about to show you at home. As I say, this is for interest only. So with that out of the way, let's uh, deal with actually what we're going to do. Okay, so choosing a slightly different angle now just to show you this in detail let me get a pointer in here just to show you what's going on 
um, and just see if I can do that there. Um, so here is the stud that locks in the hairspring at the end of the balance cock here. You can see the little stud here. Now this arm on the end of the balance cock here moves in this direction and it also moves in this direction. And when you move it, it has the effect of moving the roller jewel, uh, which is the component that sits between the horns of the pallet fork. Now, the ideal uh, situation is that at rest, that jewel is exactly in the middle of those two horns and not under any tension from the spring. So that would be its natural resting position. Once you've achieved that, the watch will come into beat in the sense that um, the balance will swing an equal amount on either side of the oscillation. So the first thing we're gonna do is move this arm from uh, from its position. You, basically, you'll look at it on the time grapher, you'll see that it's a little bit out of beat, and then you'll nudge it one way. Um, now, clearly, when you've nudged it one way, if the beat error increases, you're nudging it the wrong way. Um, so you then nudge it back. The, the idea is just carry on nudging it until the time grapher tells you that the uh, beat error is zero, okay? And with a Rolex, you should be able to achieve, you know, 0.1 to zero. You do have to be very careful as you're doing it because one slip with the screwdriver and you're gonna come straight into the uh, hairspring here. Um, so you need to be very, very careful as you uh, do that. Once you've got the watch in beat, then we can start to set the rate. And the rate is set using a special tool to adjust these screws here, okay. And uh, that tool, let me just show you that tool, it's called a Microstella wrench. And here is the Microstella wrench that I mentioned a moment ago. And just for scale, let's put it next to the watch there. So the idea of this, at the tip end of it, there is a flower shaped hole and that fits over the adjustment screw. So you place it over whilst holding the balance with some tweezers, okay, so that you're not putting strain on the uh, balance staff pivot. And uh, you then turn it left or right. Now, if you look on the clear plastic part of the tool, let me just show you this here. You should, the light's just not in our favor really, but you should be able to see two red lines. And as you turn one way, you can see the lines move. So you know how far you've turned it, okay? Now the key thing is to notice how far you've turned one screw so that you turn the other screw, which is 180 uh, degrees uh, away, in this movement at least, from the, the screw that you're turning. So diametrically opposed screws need to be turned in the same direction by the same number of units. Now, you turn the screws in towards the staff, i.e. the center of the balance to go faster and out towards the rim of the balance to go slower. If you think of an ice skater, it's the same thing. If an ice skater puts her or his arms out, they will spin more slowly. And if they want to spin quickly, they will tuck their arms in. Okay, and that is the theory behind it. What I'm gonna do now is show you some very close up footage of actually putting this tool on the screw and turning it. And then I'm gonna actually do it for real on this watch and we will look at the trace. But that is how this is achieved. Okay, so you can see here now that I've got the tool sliding along uh, the nut on the thread on the inner side of the balance wheel there. And I'm just gonna give it a little turn now. Now you have to be really, really careful when you're doing this. And you need to hold the balance with a 
pair of tweezers because you don't want any pressure going on to the balance staff pivot and just turning it back now because I overdid it there a little bit. Um, but guys, this is the Microstella tool in action, just lifting the tool away now. Okay, so we've done the regulation now on this little Rolex 2135 movement. And um, as you can see, the balance is swinging away there nicely. And this is the kind of trace that you should see from a regulated Rolex. Okay, as you can see, um, we have a very, very nice strong beat there. We're plus one second a day, naught seconds a day, and the beat error is zero. In fact, we've got zero seconds per day, and the beat error is zero. And look how, look just how straight and steady that readout is. That is the readout from a nicely serviced and regulated 2135 Rolex. Okay, there we are. Okay, so here's the final finished article there. And I think, although I say so myself, what shouldn't, it is looking pretty fine and smart and lovely. And if you remember, we started three videos ago with a watch that was in bad need of a service. It was losing 20 seconds plus a day, which for a Rolex is a little bit of a disaster. And it also had that shattered crystal. So uh, we have put right all of those things and this little Rolex Oyster Perpetual date just at only 26 millimeters has been reborn. Now in the last video, the final shot was just to give you an idea of the scale. I put it next to a pocket watch that I've been working on that week. So I'm going to do the same this week. Um, here is a Fuse pocket watch. There's one of the pocket watches, just get the light on there with a tiny little chain in it. Just get my finger out of the way. Um, and again, you know, uh, if you look at the scale of this thing, uh, just bring in the Rolex here. Okay. The Rolex and the pocket watch, you know, it's a whole, it's almost like when you've worked on these little Rolexes, it's almost like going and working on a clock. Um, when you work on, uh, these pocket watches I do have to say though, what a joy it is to bring back this pocket watch. Um, which is a good 160 years old uh, to be working in this nice condition. Anyway, next up, um, we got, we're having a bit of a focus on Rolex at the moment. Here we've got a, uh, a Submariner um, and it's, uh, it's in need of a service and the bezel, look at this, the bezel doesn't work. Okay, that's just spinning around there. So we're going to sort that out. Um, so yeah, having a little bit of a focus on Rolex at the moment because actually also got this Explorer 2 in with the GMT function that you can see there. And you know, I find this a really, really interesting piece by Rolex. So I am going to do a little review on it. So stay tuned for that. So guys, if you like my videos, then please subscribe, hit the little bell icon there so that you don't miss any videos that I put out. I am also on Patreon. So if you want to support me, you know, maybe just buy me a coffee a month. Um, you know, there you can start supporting me at $2 a month. Um, gee, you know, gotta be worth that. Um, then, uh, please, you know, have a, have a look at that. And, uh, you know, there are some benefits associated with your $2 a month. So please go away and have a look at that. Anyway, uh, this wraps up this three video series on this lovely little Rolex Oyster Datejust. So from the watch bench here in Pembroke Dock in Wales in the United Kingdom. Guys, that's all I have for you 
from this three video series. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it. But for now, from the watch bench here, cheerio and God bless for now.